So it looks like we lost Roland just for I know, a second. I think we left. just lost him. I'm trying to find Roland. We just, you froze. With the structure. Roland, in... Oh, there we go. Roland's back. There we he lost is. Just a sec, Roland. Uh, it tells me I'm unstable. I've heard that before. My God. <laughs> and I didn't need Zoom to tell me that. I already know that, Zoom. You uh, may want to go back, Roland, for just a little bit. Oh, I was just saying that um, there's a, a deal that I'm in the middle of negotiating right now. And we've agreed that there will be equity. It was at, on the back of a 25K consult for a home services company. They're doing a nationwide roll up of multiple verticals of other home services companies. And then they're also negotiating with multiple manufacturers, both to acquire and put them in a marketplace. It's a really, really fun, complicated uh, kind of deal that I love to take the spaghetti and untangle it and show people how it can all lay out really, really neatly. Um, and so, like, that's a deal again that they just ask. They said, look, it's clear. I, I, there was just one thing that, that I gave them that they're like, that's a couple million dollars a year to us. Um, and that's one thing that's nice about dealing with companies that are existing ongoing business companies, because it's really easy to find value because again, they're here, they've got the money, it's staring them right in the face, but they're focused on the dot. They're focused on the dot. The dot is the whirlwind of stuff that's going on. The dot is the plan that they've already got. The dot is the stuff that they think they want to do that they haven't accomplished yet. And that's where they're focused and they don't see the money standing right there in front of them so close. So it's not hard to do this. And a few of you have asked in here, you said, but what if I don't have the special knowledge? And we're going to show you how you can borrow that knowledge and do this. Some of you have said, well, where do I find the clients if I don't already have the reputation of you guys? Um, we're going to show you how to do that too. So hang on. We told you this would be a couple hours. So hopefully you're in this for the long run. Um, I want to get through a couple more case studies and then we'll dive into some of that other stuff as we go forward. So um, also uh, another deal that, uh, that we just actually did, we just signed was uh, a 10% interest in um, a real estate uh, investment company that is uh, profiting at just a little over one eight, I think it's one eight five uh, and profit right now with multiple equity deals um, that are coming from the companies that they're dealing with. So like these sequential multiple equity deals are really, really fun. It's something that we don't have time to go in today, but we do dive into in the, uh, in the more detailed training. And um, all I did there, we, we came in and I partnered with somebody else who had what they needed. So some of you talk about, well, what if I don't know the stuff that, that you know? Or what if I don't know the thing that they need? well, then go partner with somebody that does, right? There's plenty of people that are not charging the right amount of money or are charging money, but have no interest or knowledge about how to do equity. And you can open their eyes so that they can see the dollar sign too and say, hey, look, um, I've got somebody who needs this thing that you do. In this case, it was somebody that could provide organic lead gen, right? So I partnered, we did a co-partner deal with the person who does the organic lead gen and then I said, here's the guy that can do this for you. And then I pick up equity in the deal. And honestly, there, I don't really have to do much of anything. I mean, I have to kind of show up because it's important to show up. Otherwise, I have found that if you don't show up, you can get cut out of a deal, even with a contract. But, um, but it's not really that hard, right? I borrowed somebody else's knowledge. You guys can do the same thing. Um, same thing for a, uh, another deal that I just did. I got 30% in a, it's a hundred thousand dollar per person, um, services business. So it's an online services business that provides services for businesses and they charge them a hundred K a piece. And, um, and I, again, just went in and made some connections for them and picked up 30% of that deal. Ed picked up 50% in a expert business that you turned into an info publishing business in the dental space. And then you were getting $50,000 a month until you sold it for high six figures. Will you share that deal, Ed, and kind of how that came about? Well, again, you know, it kind of goes to, again, it, it, organically and looking at what flow was happening. Um, if I knew what I knew now back then, but it was just, it was, I, I was in control of an audience. I had, um, we were generating leads, running seminars, had customers coming in. And uh, someone came to an event. They were an expert. They were, they were trading money, uh, time for money, being in offices, traveling away from their family. And I had said, well, hey, I could show you a very uh, simple way to leverage yourself because she had unique knowledge. There's no doubt about that. And then, um, again, it was like, well, 
here's how that works. And uh, we can help you do that very quickly. And we just became partners 50, 50. And what was really cool about that. And this is great for everybody listening is that it was a very simple bolt on to stuff. I was already, all my expenses were already paid expenses were paid. So all the revenue that came in from that relationship was literally 90% net profit. And, um, and that was a very sellable asset, which we took, we did sell a, a few years after uh, being a part of that. That's awesome. Uh, and I see Boone ask, is there a vesting period to the equity? Does the valuation come into the picture? Valuation is always in the picture when you're determining equity, because you're going to have some conversation about what is the value that you're bringing compared to the value of what you're asking for Boone. So that is something that is part of the conversation when you're negotiating. Um, vesting period wise, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I have done both. Obviously when I start negotiating, I am not offering it. Sometimes people ask for it. If it's an acceptable, I want some vesting to be immediate. Um, but if it, if there has to be some other thing that happens, uh, to make the rest of it go, I'm not afraid of that. So it just depends on the deal again. Uh, Joe says I'm in, I love it. Uh, Tracy, let's see. It was great working vacation. Okay. I just want to be sure I got Okay. Thank you, Adam, for answering that. Our monthly and quarterly distributions taken on all of these case studies. Uh, Crispin, I wouldn't say that they, it's nice to see you, by the way. Um, I wouldn't say that they are taken on all of them because sometimes uh, if you don't need the cash, which I, I don't, most of us don't that are, that are on this call, um, then sometimes we will say we would rather have that reinvested in the company. Um, but most of the deals that I am doing, I will say, the people are doing distributions. And so we participate pro rata. Usually there's some amount of profits that are going back in to grow the company and some amount that are being distributed. And we're in for that. You can also negotiate a uh, fixed payment that's going to come out to you every month. Let's see. Um, this is a da, 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 da. I just want to be sure I get these because there's so many that came through. Adam, you got lots of compliments here that saying that you rocked. Let's see. Oh, um, thanks, Roland. I just listen to what Roland says and do it. You know, that everyone's like, how are you so smart? I was like, I do what Roland says. Everyone else is like, oh, Adam's clever. No, I just literally just do what he says. A lot of people don't. That's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Quincy, damn, setting up deals like this is next level. Outside Roland, never seen anyone. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Let's see. Awesome deal. Adam, they liked it. Echoing Crispin, our monthly and quarterly distributions. You guys got that. Okay. How do you get your equity out? Do they have to sell the company? It's a great question, Ian. So again, we're not really focused on that here, but the way you get your equity out is when and if they sell, or if they don't, you can build in a thing that's called a put option, which allows you to force them to buy you out. If you do that, they may also ask for a call option, which allows them to force you to sell. So that's simple. It's uh, very, very standard stuff and easy to build in. Let's see. Um, Let's see, Greg, my current problem is it was a seven-figure affiliate media buyer, also took an e-com brand and Shopify from zero to three million, currently can't even get people to talk to me to set up their media buys for free. We only charge when we make them profit. I can't even give away my knowledge for their free. Well, I'm not sure why that's a challenge, Greg. Um, it sounds like it's just an offer issue for you. So that's something that could definitely be addressed for sure. But, um, but to get people to take a valuable service where you can help them, it's either a quality of lead challenge or an offer challenge usually. Um, hell yeah, keep those case studies coming, Quincy says. I like that. Let's see. Uh, feels like Christmas here, Joe. That's great. Like that. Okay. Just want to be sure. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Carl. If you're not at the table, you can't get, you can get cut out. In other words, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Yeah, that's, I like that. I forgot who said that, but that, that is great. Uh, Eric, let's see, Andrew got any tips for borrowing someone's authority when you haven't built your own in the beginning. So, um, who let's see, um, Ed or. Yeah, Adam, I can, I, I can dive in here. I mean, great. so, um, I never consider myself to be a really good media buyer, um, but over the last three years, I've ran, I think about nine different seminars and intensives all about traffic mastery and about influential influencer, <laughs> blah, influencer mastery live. And my, I would be like on a scale of zero to 10, I'd be like a six, as far as understanding how all that worked. And <coughs> one of the key things that I, <coughs> I did, uh, hopefully someone's okay there. God bless you. Um, is, um, I strategically went out and found those people, asked them to speak on my stage, 
put them in a room and for two days interviewed them and um, immediately, you know, the, the events were amazing. So um, I think one of the things that Roland taught me that's really brilliant. And Adam, you said this, I think, on one of the epic trainings before about when you go into negotiations, you don't need to have the knowledge because if you know that you can go get the knowledge from somebody else, it's just as good as if you were walking into that meeting with the knowledge or with the money or with the business or with the system with the way Roland and Adam and Deanna and this whole crew and Pete teach like with the Epic system and then transitioning into how this has evolved and transformed into a consultant for equity. You literally have, um, kind of like a super what's what's is what's the uh like a superpower because you have a whole team behind you that you can just pull in off the bullpen when you need it and that's massive leverage you don't have to go spend 10 years learning something so i rambled a little bit but hopefully that helped a little i like it okay uh, a couple more questions let's see matt this is gold loving the call excited for the case studies and answers to other questions just left a 14 year government career Getting started in my own thing in this space. Keep the knowledge coming. You're welcome. That's great. That's fantastic. Rosemary, I own a marina and resort in Canada. Negotiating a sale. Uh, aim at the moment is to sell to a developer, max out the value, but maybe other potentials. I'm open. Scale is about 150 homes, 60 boats. Getting environmental approvals and dealing with stubborn town council at the moment. I see this deal is absolutely doable and much bigger than when I started. That's fantastic. Okay. It didn't seem like there was a question there. So I, I, I doesn't, doesn't seem like there's anything else to say, but that's cool. Would it be folks, Josmar says, would it be best to focus on being a growth consultant first and then get, uh, and then it looks like you got cut off. Um, the answer is whatever is easiest for you. And again, uh, here in a second, I'm going to hop in just a minute to, um, to show you how you can solve some of those challenges. Let's see. Um, I see also a lot of you guys are sharing LinkedIn and that's totally cool. I'm all for it. Um, I think it would be really great if you would come into the Facebook group, maybe Deanna or Ed could post a link to the Facebook group where we talk about all this stuff um, because we have one and that's easier. LinkedIn is great, but that's individual one-on-one -on -one, uh, and there's, so it's hard to have group learnings there and you miss on, out on a whole lot of stuff. So I'd encourage you to go in the Facebook group, but it's totally up to you guys. Let's see. Um, would it be best to focus on being a growth consultant and then get into M&As? I see what you were saying. Okay. Or get into equity and M&A from the beginning. I think you can do both, Josmar. I mean, this is really not about M&A as much this call is about consulting for equity. So you're acquiring interests in companies that are already going, um, which is, you know, I guess it's a form of M&A, but it's really not like acquiring companies like we teach in Epic. It's a, it's a different skill set and it's a different um, process for doing it. Let's see. Um, okay. Can you please talk more about what you, this is Linda. Hey, Linda, uh, about what you use as a basis, both the fixed monthly payment or distributions when you're negotiating equity back to the valuation. How do you go? Again? Yeah, that's a little bit more um, hang in for the Q and a Linda. And, um, and I'm happy to address those. I just don't want to, I want to get through answering people's questions and taking taking, uh, getting through what we want to share with everybody first. Can we talk more about pitfalls and fixes in an equity contract? The put is for sure obvious, but I haven't done it. Never thought of it, uh, Rosemary. Yeah, we can talk about that in the Q&A. John, do you have any case studies of systems, system-based coaches like EOS, implementers, scaling up coaches, et cetera, making transition, coaching for equity? Um, yeah, we have lots of people that have done that, John. Um, I think, as a matter of fact, I think that's the next case study that I'm going to talk about. Robert, uh, great to be here. Good. We talk about how you structure borrowed expertise deals. Yeah, Darrell, um, I just don't think we're going to have time to do that today. But again, hang in for the Q&A. Uh, let's see. S says, we help e-commerce websites grow and I have a whole team, but would like to know how to best leverage the services and team we offer for equity. Um, so that's easy to do, S. Just uh, we have a process for doing that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, some, somewhat like I heard Dan Sullivan say, you don't have to know how just to, yeah. Who not the how, right. Or how not the who, how, who not, who not how, I think it's who not how totally lost Elvis. I'm sorry. That's, that's uh, not cool. Well, hopefully it will sink in as we go. Let's see. Okay. I think, can you go over baseline Facebook groups this is helping deal structures, acquisitions, just looking real quick. All right. I think, um, okay, cool. So, um, one of the case studies too, um, and we had Matt up on the stage in, um, at our epic mastermind, which about 160 of you came to 
um, just uh, earlier this month, earlier this month. It's crazy. That was this month. Um, but um, so what he did is he used to charge $25,000 as a medical practice consultant. And um, now he's getting, again, that magic number, 25%. Again, it's whatever makes it. It's, I think 25% comes up again and again, because it's, um, it's a number that doesn't feel threatening to the person that you're cutting the deal with. And it's a number that you feel like if you multiply that, Hey, if it's doing a million dollars a year, I'm going to get $250,000 a year. If it sells for a million dollars, I'll get 250,000. It just seems like a number that when you multiply it by the numbers of what you're expecting to get in the deal, it, it adds up to something that sounds like, okay, that's worth doing. But so now what he's doing is quite simply telling them, look, here's my track record. Here's what I've done in the past. Um, I take 25% of it. And he's using that now as a roll-up strategy to roll all those people up and sell them on the bigger vision of the multiple increase that they'll get by being a bigger entity and the buying power that they'll get to do uh, co-op buying of the kind of supplies that they're doing. So before I go into the, um, the next phase where I'm going to talk first about um, the three P's, of how you do this. And um, then I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about all the different ways that we get clients and that we source deals. I'd like to talk about um, the opportunity that we have for you guys, which is to become part of our program on equity consulting. And I think, um, let's see, I don't know. Let me see if I can pull up. Um, Deanna, can you share the page or Ed, one of you guys share the page that has the info on it and we can run through that real quick. If not, I will find Ed, it. I can on... make you a... Oh, I got it. I got it. Here it is. Okay. Let's see. And Deanna's letting me share. Sometimes she doesn't, you know? Okay. It's just the mood I'm in. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So if you guys like this stuff and we are halfway through the call. Okay. So there's plenty more to come. Um, but if you guys like this stuff, we have the black Friday special of black Friday specials. It's an 89% off deal. There's only 25 spots available. This is strictly equity consulting. It is not m a It is not the stuff that we cover in Epic. It's completely different. This is how can you get equity in deals how can you find the clients? How can you uh, close the deals? How can you get paid? How can you exit? How can you protect yourself? Um, how, what are the strategies? How can you avoid taxes on this? Um, so we got 25 spots available. It's an eight week program. It's all about mentoring you. It's the four of us, Deanna and um, Adam and Ed and me. Um, and we're doing a done with you advanced masterclass, right? So it's all of us. Uh, if it's something that you would like to find out more about, if you'd like to see if you can qualify for it, if you'd like to say, you know, I just have some questions, you can text or call or even WhatsApp if you're international, Deanna, and just say, I'm in and Deanna will reply to you if she doesn't, if she's not able to take the call immediately. Obviously, she's on here right now, so she can't take it right now. Um, but 512-797-5100, we will watch the order that these come in. And when we get to our 25, that's, that's it. Um, so please, uh, if it's something that seems like it makes sense for you, I would definitely think it would make sense for you to get yourself in here uh, sooner rather than later. In. But, uh, but basically, and here's, here's what we have. We have um, get your first client for equity. It's a 15 day sprint where we're going to go through live do an equity deal and we will have you going through with us. So obviously the sprint is going to come after the education because you got to have the understanding of how this works, how we're going to source all of that kind of stuff. Um, we have the acres of diamonds is three zero cost getting strategies you can do immediately. So there's three really cool strategies that we found make clients come in quickly. You don't have to be Frank Kern or me or Adam or Deanna or have a huge network to do that. They work completely cold. Um, unlimited leads lining up from Instagram, LinkedIn, and social. That's basically a social media strategy that we found to be super effective. That's not an instant strategy, by the way. That's one that's going to take a little bit more time. But if you already have a social media pref bleh, presence, then uh, I think you'll find that it's surprisingly easy to shake some really cool deals out of the network that you've already got, even if you're not like a guru person or anything like that. Um, 
We also have Ed's $6 million method on using your expertise to do lead generation with zero ad spend. Ed is an absolute genius at this stuff. So I would, I would definitely, uh, I think you're going to have a really, really cool time seeing what he's done there. Uh, we've got the uh, boomerang method, which is how to close the best clients with zero fee resistance. As I mentioned, most of the clients that all of us are dealing with are asking us if we will come in. And that's a lot um, of the first P, which is positioning, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, also, we have a one page paint the picture. So Brenny Brown says paint it done. Um, we have a document that's a PDF that we use to paint it done for people so that when we're talking to them, we can show them, here's what success looks like. That's really important because you've got to have your client have the right expectations so that they'll be thrilled with the benefits that you give them and not say, oh, I want more or worse of all, I want you to be working in my business as a wage slave. You don't want to do that. It's really, really critical that you position yourself right from the beginning. And this helps you do that. We also have um, five group closing strategies. So this is really cool. This is showing you how you can take other people's not yours. You don't have to go through this. To me, I am all about leverage. Remember leverage it, leverage and momentum. So to me, leverage is less effort, bigger results, right? Less effort, bigger results. And one of the best ways you can do that is by coming in and tapping into the momentum that other people already have. You've heard, hopefully, and seen in most of these case studies, you've identified that what we really do more than anything else is we go and find the opportunities that already exist, the people that are already doing something successfully and profitably, but missing the dollar sign, right? I love that exercise because literally the dollar sign is right in front of you. The money's in your face. You just don't see it. There's so many people that are in that situation. So lead magnets, books, webinars, challenges, and podcasts are just five of the closing strategy and lead sources that we'll talk about specific strategies for how we use those. Um, I'll give you also our vault. This is 56 complete intensive. So when you said, how do I get, several of you said, how do I get this specialized knowledge? I don't know. I don't know this stuff. I don't know that stuff either, right? What I do know is I know Pete Vargas, who was on this call, right, who has an amazing training for speakers. I can go to Pete and say, Pete, can I get your expertise? I can go to Tucker Max, who writes books for people, and I'm an advisor on his scribe thing, and say, Tucker, can you tell people how to write books? We can go and partner with those people, and we also have a library of 56 $2,000 events. We charge $2,000 for each of these events that we have put together that are step by step by step workshops from the people who know how to do it. And what's cool is that you can go in there and you can share those with your customer. You can use those to get yourself up to speed and say, I know exactly how to fix that business. Or you can use that to learn and then go reach out to those people like Pete and say, hey man, could I partner with you on this? Because Pete does deals, Tucker does deals. All these people are people that we know, love, and trust and work with. That's $130,000 of intensive backup materials of experts that you've got standing in your corner. You also get um, my complete bl blueprint. This is what I do when I go in. So I've got blueprints for different things because people tend to come to me and ask for the same different types of things over and over and over. So if they want to grow their sales, I've got a complete blueprint for, okay, here's our half day. Here's how we're going to grow sales. You get all of that, right? So you can have effectively step into my brain and my systems and just go through and tell them that it's not rocket science. Again, it's just opening the eye. It's taking their hand off that eye. You get to be that person. They will absolutely want you to be part of their business. And Deanna, we've got six people in the waiting room if you can let them in. Um, the second is the grow profits. So grow sales is the first thing that most people ask me about. Second thing they'll ask me about is, how do I make this more profitable? Okay, so I've got a complete full day consult blueprints. It says full day. I'm sorry, those are half days, um, but you don't need a full day. You don't need a full day. It's so much time to spend eight hours, right? Um, it's a, a grow profits half day consult blueprint. So you have everything that I do when I'm talking to somebody about growing profits. And you also have the marketing makeover experience. So that's a half day blueprint as well on how to change their marketing 
right? We also have in this, in Epic, we've grown to almost 100, I believe now, different agreements and templates that we've got. Here in the equity consulting, we're starting out with 21 of our best checklists, agreement scripts, models, and templates. So you'll get all of those. That will continue to grow uh, as it has in Epic. We launched, I think, with about that number when we were there. It might've even been fewer. Uh, and you get lifetime access to the consulting for equity community. So any of you that are in the um, uh, Epic Elite or Epic Accelerator uh, Facebook group know that there's people in there doing deals. It's an active community with, I think we've got about 1200 people in there now that are all talking and doing deals. And we continue to provide value, even though it doesn't cost anything to be in there. We're going to do the same thing here with the consulting for equity community. That is, um, that is the first thing that we have. And I don't know exactly how, uh, Deanna, if you want to explain, I think that's, uh, $4,995. And the best way for them to get to that is just to text you if they're, if that's something that seems like a fit. Yes, absolutely. Just, just send me a text at 512-797-5100. I'm actually responding to several of you right now. Okay, fantastic. And then put that in the uh, text. And if you say, you can say I'm in that just lets Deanna separate that from, cause that's her actual cell phone, separate that from other people that she might be talking to. It doesn't mean that you're committing. It just means I'm in for finding out. Okay. Um, let's see then the, uh, so that's that, uh, first offer. In addition to that, if you'd like, um, we are doing consulting for equity live. So you get everything that is in the equity masterclass. Plus we are, as you, any of you that have been to our events, you know, we generally only do them in five-star hotels. So we like nice things and we want to hang out with you, but we want to do it in a place that we actually want to hang out, even if you weren't there. So we're doing it in uh, a really nice five-star hotel. Uh, and uh, Deanna is setting all of that up for us as we speak. That will be uh, something where we have the four of us, plus some guest experts, uh, any of you that have come to any of our legs or uh, live, the equity live event that we just did earlier this month, know we bring really, really cool people uh, in and we deliver ridiculous value because we want you to succeed. Um, so at that, you'll have, again, it's limited, it's 25 people. So you'll have in-person access uh, to me and the team for two full days. So you talk to us about whatever you want in between presentations. Obviously, we won't all be presenting at the same time and we're there to help you, right? Um, also, you can become a client getting machine in 22 with our latest, most up-to-date methods, um, have some networking, doing deals together. There's just nothing like being live in person. Um, and then we've got a really cool uh, session that is designed to uh, cut your wealth build by 20 years. Um, and that's showing you the compounding power of doing equity deals. And we have a really cool wealth manager that'll come in and also kind of share how that is working. Uh, I've sent more people. This is something that says a lot, I think, about the success of these programs is that uh, I've sent, I don't know how many people I've lost count of the people that I've sent now to wealth managers because they need somebody to handle managing what they've built uh, in terms of net worth from all the deals they've done. So there's some really cool live bonuses. Um, the additional uh, three highest paying half day consults. So these are the ones that I charge the most for. One is the mergers and acquisitions strategic plan. So this is the complete, again, half day consult when somebody says, I want to grow by M&A. How do I do that? And I've done this with most of the people that you would have heard of in our industry um, have had me come in and do a half day to show them how to grow through acquisitions. So the M&A strategic plan consult is a specific half day consult that I do. Um, business exit consult for maximum value. I'm doing one of those right now. It's one of our case studies. Um, we just got, believe it or not, we just got the offer last night. Um, and so my interest in that, which was just an equity um, earn-in deal, my interest in that is 750,000 with the current offer that's on the table, but I'm going to get it to a million five uh, for me, my, my, my take. And I only get 5%. So um, that's pretty fun. And then, uh, so it's a complete how to do that half day consult. And then also enterprise valuation growth. So a lot of people come in and they say, how can I make my company worth more and, um, and show me exactly how to do that? I've got a half day consult on that. The good news for you guys is I've been doing this so much that I've kind of templatized these because people have the same issues across these six, in this case, uh, different things that they want. So you get all that as well. And that's, um, I think it's $9,995. I'm not sure what the price is. Deanna can tell you, I always mess that up. But anybody who is interested in any of that stuff, uh, just text, call, 
or WhatsApp Deanna and say I'm in. D, Ed, Adam, do you guys have anything to say about any of this stuff before I hop back to uh, to the other things we were talking about? I, I've got a, a ton of stuff to say. I think one of the biggest is I've got a case study that just one alone that I think justifies this entire program. If somebody's like on the fence. You're like, you're not sure if you want to do it. Roland, this is the one case that I haven't told you about. So you, this is new for Roland. I'm too. excited to hear it. All right. So I, Roland knows, I've, I've been battling to find a good ad agency. So I had this one ad agency and I really liked them and they were doing pretty good, but not amazing. Fast forward $75,000 worth of fees that I've racked up and they really haven't netted positive. It's, it's not bad, but it's not netted positive. So I get the guy on the phone, the owner of the company, and I'm like, listen, I'm not here today to ask you for a refund. I was like, because I understand you've been working, you've got close to it. I was like, but I am here today to ask you one question. Bond, you're going to love this. I was like, do you really care about your company? Is this actually what you care about the most? And he's like, well, no, I've got this other company that I really care about. This is something I'm doing on the side. I was like, I kind of got that feeling. I was like, look, in my opinion, I think, I think you guys could have succeeded, but it just feels like, you, you don't have the energy into it. You don't have the direction. If you could sell it, would you? And he said, it's funny you say that. I put it up for sale last year and got a 2 million valuation, but the buyer ended up not having the correct capital, the, not correct, the correct cash. So he backed out and I kind of like switched off because I thought it was done. And now I found myself keeping the business. It still makes a lot of money, but you know, I don't really know what to do with it. I was like, I've got an idea. And he's like, what's that? I was like, why don't you just give me half? That's a million dollars from a $75,000 loss, guys. $75,000 loss turned into a million in equity if the deal went through, which it did. So I said, why don't you just give me half and I will function as you in the company? And he says to me, you're telling me you're going to turn up and work 40 hours a week. I was like, are you working 40 hours a week? And he said, well, no. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, I, I turn up and give some advice every so often. I was like, how often? He goes, once a week for an hour. I was like, look, I'll do that and I'll do a little bit better. I was like, because I'll bring in my standard SOPs, my contacts. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that we can, we can completely turn this company around. So that was the initial conversation. He invited me out to hang out with him for a week. Um, so we'd like get to know each other better. Fast forward a week later, and now we've got the paperwork going through. 75,000 loss into a million dollar in equity gain, guys. Just that one deal, everything in that was stuff I've learned from Roland Frazier. Everything. Just that one deal alone would have made this entire program worth it. And yet, I, and I've complained about Roland before about this, and I'm going to tell you now, Roland over delivers and he shouldn't. He should reduce what he's doing for you guys because he's not charging enough or he's working too hard for the money. I've said this since day one of working with Roland. This, the, the truth still stands. If you implement what he says, the amount of wealth you generate is insane. And I know because I live it. So there you go. That's my case study, guys, and how you can find deals for being a consultant from being a customer. Uh, this is a no-brainer. Everyone should do this. I'm just as excited to go through it as I am to continue on. That's awesome, Adam. I, I appreciate that. Ed, anything before I hop yeah, in? Yeah, I mean, yeah, question? I think the, there's a couple of things. Like my first company that actually had any success at all was in the dental uh, marketing world. Before I knew anything about dentistry, this is kind of a crazy story, but it's too long to share here. But I dove into that. The way I did it is I licensed the rights to use someone else's uh, product that was successful in a different um, market. But I had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next couple of years in royalties paying that person uh, for the, the rights to use that material. Um, and my second success was in my supplement business. My startup costs were well over $100,000 just to get off the ground. And again, I had to do the work in both of those businesses and took all the risk. With um, If you could just trust the fact that this framework, you can bolt down on the front end of your business or the back end of your business. And for the investment that you are doing, um, you're literally doing the same exact system that I did by, by paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you're, you're, you're collapsing time. And you're also getting access to a brand new model that, frankly, no one is doing it at the level that Roland is doing it. And you're seeing all these amazing case studies by amazing people. So um, I would say I would say that's number one, Roland. The second mistake that I made for too many years, and I just want to caution people not to make this same mistake, is 
is to say to yourself like, well, once I get this, once I know more about X, then I'll be ready to go do something like this. You're never gonna know enough about everything. You kind of got to trust the process and put yourself in the position, leap forward and, um, and trust the, the advisors and, and people that you're, you're, you're uh, investing in yourself to be your mentors and just get on with that process. That's my two cents. Uh, That's awesome. So if there's something that makes sense for you, please uh, reach out to Deanna, just say I'm in, she'll reply to you and uh, and we'd love to have you in. We've got 25 spots available and then we will just be moving on, creating our case studies and doing cool deals. So hopping back in, let's see, Dan says, uh, is helping with deal structures for acquisitions enough of a service for consulting? Absolutely. One of the things that people ask me to do the most, Dan, is to help them structure the company because they'll come in and most of them don't even have an organizational chart. So step one, okay, let's build an organizational chart for you. I don't do that. I'm like, you need to build an organizational chart. Here's how you do that. Then come to me and let's move the pieces around to see who should be where then we have the org chart done. We say, okay, now we've got that mess kind of sorted out. The next spaghetti is who owns what and what are the profit centers of the company? And then we go through that whole thing. That is a tremendously valuable consult. So you absolutely can provide ridiculous value for people just by doing that. Very often, there are tremendous tax savings that can be done. Don't do that without a, you know, a tax attorney that you partner with. I bring in my tax attorney when I do those consults as part of the deal. So I price him in, but he's basically free. I give him a thousand dollars for two hours and I got the best tax advice in the world sitting on my shoulder and I make 24,000 instead of 25. I mean, that's crazy. And very often I just tell them, Hey, the tax attorney has to be there and he's a thousand bucks and they pay them. Uh, so absolutely great question. Love that. Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Thank you again. I appreciate that, Rosemary. I'm glad this is really helpful to you. How is company valued if a put call is exercised? The same way it would be normally valued, Ian. The, the most common way that these companies are valued are from comparable transactions, which yield, when you look at a group of them, a multiple of profit or EBITDA that they typically sell for. That's how most deals get valued. Um, let's see, Glenn. We have special knowledge in the health and wellness arena and looking to team up for relevant deals. Also looking to acquire a nutritional supplement manufacturer. Okay, so Dr. Glenn, if anybody is in that area, definitely talk with Dr. Glenn. Let's see. Um, let's see, Boone says, are you using SAFE, which is a simple agreement for equity or convertible note? How do you liquidate the equity? No, those are straight. Typically I'm using profits only interests or phantom equity, Boone, on those. My, prefer my preference is always a profits only interest, but that's a little bit... Uh, advanced question for what we're talking about here. Safes and convertible notes would be more for like a startup deal and we're doing earn-ins. So we don't typically do that. Let's see, Albano. I think I just realized what I want to do with my career a long time. Thanks for this call. Unbelievable value. That's awesome, Albano. That's really, really great. Kali, how do you determine the equity percentage? Um, there's a lot of different ways, but I talked about that earlier. Um, let's see, Epic Mastermind was an impressive lineup. That's awesome. Thank you, Scott. And thank you for your comment earlier. I appreciate that. Mohammed, here's the link to Roland's Consulting for Equity Group. That's cool. Thank you, Mohammed, for sharing that. Eric, so we're talking 25% of net cash flow and equity growth above the baseline that was there when we came in. In a baseline deal, that's how that typically works, Eric. Nicole, will this be covered in the new scalable advisor program uh, where we're consulting? No, Nicole, this is a whole separate thing. So that's like frameworks and, and, um, uh, and built around the seven levels of scale program. This is a different, basically, how do I get equity for doing those kinds of things? Let's see. Hey, hey Roland, can I chime in real quick just to make sure the questions stay on like how to get clients? And yes, sir. How to, so really the framework in consulting for equity, everyone, is really Roland breaks this down into three simple methods. Like you got to get clients and then how do you deliver a world-class level 10 experience during the consulting day? I've been in Roland's... Um, consulting uh consult days and if you listen to the structure that he puts like forth where he follows his frameworks the logical next steps of the client is they're going to be asking you <laughs> to to take equity so some of the like uh advanced strategies of going and cutting these aggressive deals this is not that this is so easy if you follow these three frameworks 
So Roland, can you, do you mind doing an overview of just that kind of the three steps and how you keep it simple? I will. And uh, there's some noise in the background, Adam, somebody suggested that might be you. Do you have something going on there? No, I'm muted. Okay. So Deanna, can you find that, that noise and see if you can eliminate that? Cool. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to hop then into this. Um, there's some other questions there, but I will let Deanna and Ed uh, handle those. I'm going to stop sharing here so that I can come back and see all of your pretty faces. And then I'm going to pull up my little cheat sheet and get back into the meat. Okay. All right. So um, so here's the deal. The the To me, there are three things that are really important for you to do when you're doing this. And the first, it's three Ps. The very first one is positioning. So you'll notice if you look at my social media and any of you that have been for Ep through Epic know that I say, hey, look, everywhere, I say I'm an investor. And I ask you right off the bat when we go into Epic in the Epic Challenge even to change your social media and all your profiles and any bios or anything that you've got anywhere to say you're an investor, because whether you have cash or not, when you have value to bring to the deal, you have capital. Capital is not necessarily cash. Cash is value to companies. When you bring capital to a company, you are an investor, okay? So positioning yourself in consulting, I think is important as well. But if you'll notice the other thing that is on all of my profiles, it's not consultant, it's mentor. And I think mentor elevates you. So I would say one of the first things to think about when you're thinking about this P, this positioning P, is that there is a mentorship advantage because a mentor is someone that you look up to. A consultant is someone that you hire. A mentor is someone who will guide you. A consultant with like with the South, like all of them like do. Okay. Got that. Um, the, a consultant is somebody who is transactional, a mentor is someone who is relational. So a consultant is basically usually dollars for hours. A mentor is somebody that might not charge you anything, but probably you're going to want to have a significant investment with by bringing them into your company. So I position myself as a mentor. I would suggest that you guys do too. A mentor is an authority much more than a consultant. Uh, consultants are considered fungible. Mentors are really hard to find. Uh, mentor is your go-to person. A consultant is a person that you go to when you got to hire somebody for help, right? They are the help, not, uh, Frank Kern says this. He says, if you're a consultant, you're the help. If you're a mentor, you're the genius. You want to be the genius, not the help, okay? If you're a mentor, you're more likely to be asked to do podcasts. You're more likely to be asking, asked to be speaking. You're more likely to be asked to co-consult because you're not considered a threat. You're more likely to turn your PYPs, your PYBs are your, can I pick your brains? Uh, and your got a minutes, uh, the people that say, hey, got a minute, you know, but it's not, it's seven or 12 or an hour. Uh, you'll be asked to JV more often. It's really... A, an important thing to position yourself correctly in this consulting 3P triad. The second of those Ps is pricing. And there's five levels of pricing for consultants. The first one is the free PYB. PYB, pick your brain, right? So how many times has somebody asked you in the last 90 days, hey, can I pick your brain? Can you hop on a call? Can I buy you lunch? You know, I can't tell you if you're on LinkedIn at all. I know that anybody here has heard that a billion times, right? So to me, when you're doing that, you're wasting your time because you're giving it away. And the things that you provide um, to people for free typically are valued at the price that you charge. So if you're not charging anything, you are very likely not going to have somebody that values it. And more importantly, because they don't have skin in the game, they're not going to actually take your advice, which I find to be very frustrating. And it's also annoying that they're wasting my time asking to pick my brain when I know darn good and well that 99% of them are not going to do anything. Now, there will be one person from time to time, the one out of 100, let's say, that'll actually go do something, but it's very, very rare. So the first pricing strategy is free, which is what most of us do. And a lot of us don't even realize that we're providing free consulting. Anytime that you answer somebody's question and you provide help, you are giving free consulting. And I'm not saying don't be generous with your time or don't help other people. I'm just saying that what you'll ultimately find as you begin to value your time, and, and this is a great time 
for you to think about doing this because we're right on the cusp of 2022, right? 2021, 2020, different times for sure, but we're right on the cusp of 2022. And wouldn't it be nice if you could get control of your time in 2022? That was what caused me at the end of 2019 to start doing consulting because I was always against it. And I was like, I need to charge because I've got too many meetings that aren't turning into anything. And I don't have time to do this. And also it's eating into my personal time. So for you, get control of your time. My suggestion that you might want to do, get control of your time and start give, stop giving free advice and stop, start, excuse me, stop giving free advice and start climbing up to at least a level two, three or four or five consultant. Don't be a level one consultant. They don't get paid anything. They get their brains picked. Sounds painful. Should be illegal. Don't like it. Number two, level two, that's dollars for hours. Nothing wrong with it, except that all the things that suck about consulting doesn't scale. Hard to charge enough dollars to get the money that you might want. Hard to build true wealth, easy to become a dancing bear, right? And you can transcend that with flat fee. Early on in my legal career, we were one of the first law firms that ever offered flat fees for whatever you want. You want a class action lawsuit defense, flat fee, $600,000, right? You want to, you want, you know, whatever you want, we would quote a flat fee for. And you know what our hourly rate was? About eight to 10 times every other lawyer in town because we had processes and procedures that made the time that it took to do this next to nothing. So an attorney that was charging $700 an hour that took build two hours to do something would get $1,400 but deliver $10,000 in value. We would charge a $7,000 fee and flat fee and we would be paid the value every single time because the value is was in the knowledge that we had in the templates that we created in the support staff that we trained right so that made that really really easy for us you can do the same thing with consulting it's not the time it takes to turn the screw to stop the pipes from uh, leaking right from flooding the basement that's an old one right you know they slap the uh, they slap a bill on somebody after turning the screw that takes five minutes. And they're like, Hey, it only took you five minutes. Why is this cost so much? Because I knew which, which screw to turn, right? You guys know which screw to turn. You guys know how to take the eye off so that they can get the dollar sign and not the dot because they're focused on the dot. They're not focused on the dollar sign. They don't even see it. That's something you should get paid for. Flat fee allows you to do that. The next level though, because while flat fees are great, they still ultimately run into a scale problem right? You have to hire other people and it's going to take you time. Even though you're super efficient and you're getting paid a very high hourly rate, you can still only bill about 2000 to 2080 hours a year. So it's going to run into ultimately a constraint of your time. So how do you deal with that? You move to level four. So level four pricing is revenue share. That can be revenue or profit, but revenue is the best because it's hard to manipulate revenue. It's easy to manipulate profit. So this is where you say, hey, I'm going to provide this consulting. And in exchange for that, I'm going to get either a piece of the revenue of the stuff that I am able to generate, or better still, I'm going to get a piece of the revenue of the business as it increases. And there's a million different shades of how you do revenue sharing that we don't have time to cover here, but that's level four. Level five is the top. Level five is equity. When you get equity or something like equity, right, then you've actually got a stake in the value that you're adding, that you're adding to this business. When you make it worth so much more because you're, you've are you got a plan for it, then that is something that you get to participate in. You get to participate in distributions of profits. You get to maybe get a fee that's a salary or a consult on top of that. And you're able to get a piece of the deal when it sells. Absolute magic to be at level five. The third P is the plan, which I mentioned. Plan is just a framework. You got to have a framework to be a good consultant because if it's all ad hoc, then it's hard for them to follow because you won't be as organized as you could be and you won't be as efficient in delivering exactly the things that they need to do in the order they need to do them in. And that's what people want. They want certainty and they want results. A certainty of the actions that you are telling them to take and the results certainty that when they take those actions, something positive that they want is going to happen. So what we need to do is we need to have a framework. 
In Scalable, we have one called the seven levels of scale. We have one called SPV, which is sales profit value. We have a growth flywheel. We have all kinds of frameworks that help our SBAs. A few of you guys are SBAs, our scalable business um, advisors. We have a whole framework for you to work with, right? And you can take that framework and turn that into equity because you can deliver a result that we know is gonna happen for certain taking certain actions that we've already identified because we've done this a million times. So when I'm giving you guys in these programs that we talked about a minute ago, um, the half day M&A consult framework, that's a framework, right? When I'm giving you the sales growth framework or I'm giving you the exit framework, that's a framework for a half day consult that has specific steps that you will go through to gather information from them and have breakthroughs while you are doing your discovery and your advising in the four hour half day consult. And it's got a framework of what they need to do to achieve the results that we know that can achieve. So that's what that is about, right? So that you got to have a plan and the plan is the framework. So let me give you a, a case study that, uh, that I'm on the wrong side of. Uh, and this is, uh, this is how I learned it. So this is a tale of two consultants uh, with a single company. And consultant one, uh, let's call him Bob, uh, not his real name. Uh, consultant one went in and said, um, this is cool. You got a SaaS company here. It's doing really well. It's growing. Uh, I'm interested in helping you. And um, I'd love to, uh, to, to have a piece of the deal. Consultant number two, we'll call him John. His real name is Roland. Uh, John went into that same company and John said, uh, hey, look, I, uh, I, I want to help you out. And they said, well, how about if we give you a piece of equity like we did with Bob? And, uh, and John said, well, and I actually found this to be uh, out to be, this is the way it went, uh, which is nice. It makes me feel better about myself. Uh, so I went back to, uh, to my business partner and said, hey, they're offering us this equity uh, and here's what they're offering us. And, um, and basically the, uh, the partnership decided, I'm going to take credit for being part of the partnership, decided, hey, you know, we want more than that. That's not enough. And so uh, we got $40,000 in cash for our consulting and Bob uh, got a percentage of the company and Bob's interest in that ended up being worth, I'm going to say, I'm going to be very, very, very conservative, uh, it being worth, let's say, $40 million. It was a lot more. Um, and ours was worth 40000 So we chose in that case not to take equity. And, you know, that's you win some, you lose some. But that's a $40 million. No, that's a $39 million. $960,000 difference in what Bob was able to get versus John, you know, what an idiot John was, right? That's me. Um, that's the difference that consulting for equity can make. How many times are you going to allow yourself to get paid what seems like great money? The 40 grand was great. Loved it. Don't even have any idea where it went. It went into the company and it disappeared, right? Maybe I got part of it. I don't know. But, uh, but I know that Bob did really, really well. And, uh, and I want you to be Bob, not John. Okay. So um, let's talk about getting clients a little bit. Um, here's the deal. You already have, just like the dollar sign that we couldn't see when we we're moving it in and out of our, our uh, blind spot, you already have a lot of potential clients that, um, that you probably don't realize you have. Um, they are in short, everyone who says, can I pick your brain? Everyone who says, can I get your advice? Everyone who says, hey, do you have a minute? Everybody that is the quick call hoppers, right? Can, can you hop on a call? Um, all of the buy you lunchers definitely don't want you to buy me lunch. I'm trapped for at least an hour and a half, probably two hours, and I'm not happy about that. And then you have the Eeyores. The Eeyores are very often missed. If you remember Winnie the Pooh uh, in the Hundred Acre Wood, you had Eeyore who was the, I think it was a donkey. And Eeyore was always very depressed and telling you how everything was horrible. Well, Eeyores are great for you because any Eeyore that owns a business, you can change their lives. 
you can let them vent. You can let them talk about all the challenges that they have. And then you can say, wow, man, that sounds really tough. Uh, they're already experiencing the pain that you want the ideal client to experience because they know they have a problem and they know that they haven't been able to fix it. If you can then say, well, you know, I totally get that. And that's got to be really tough. Um, I think I can help you with that. They become a potential client too. So the people that like, here's what's been cool for me about this. The people who to me were the most annoying, the pick your brain, got a minute, quick call, hopper, buy you lunch, Eeyore person. I'm now excited about those people. I am happy to hear from those people now because I can turn those people into clients. I can't turn all of them. I can't even turn most of them, but I can turn the ones that I want into clients. And that's been really a positive change in my life because now I'm not, I don't resent the people at all. I, I don't know that I resented them before, but maybe I kind of did. Um, so that's, that's a really good place for you to think about is just the people who are either complaining about what's not right. That's an opportunity for you. And all the people that want to get free advice from you, they are as well. Now, in addition to that, there are several low hanging fruit things that you can do. And, um, the first of those is social media. And Ed does an amazing job at this. Ed, would you share a little bit? Because we actually, Ed and I reconnected after um, not doing business together, always staying in touch, but not really doing business together for a while. When he reached out to me and said, hey, I've got this thing I can do that probably will pick up money that you're missing in all of your businesses. And um, would you share a little bit about that, Ed? Well, yeah, I mean, the bigger, con I'll, I'll share specifics, but the bigger context is that when you're, when you have a client that has any kind of customer flow or has had customer flow, they're going to have, well, you know, like um, dormant assets sitting there, they're ignoring kind of like the whole thing Roland talked about. And Roland had come to me with a separate deal. And I said to him, Hey, Roland, what are you doing with these customers after they purchased? And he said, well, he said, well, we put them through a webinar and we do this. I'm like, are you direct mailing them? And, I, and he said, no. <clears throat> I said, would you mind if I direct mail them for you? I'll pay for everything. I'll write the sales copy. And we have a system that upgrades high ticket offers on the back end of, say, challenge buyers or book buyers or low, low, low ticket info buyers. And um, so, again, like that, that was an easy offer to get him to say yes to because it's really just offering him to make more money without doing anything, which is a great way to position yourself uh, with consulting or even uh, strategic partnerships. And so um, we sent out a direct mail piece spent uh, to like what 800, maybe 800 or 900 people spent about $2,000 in total. Um, we re lead generated his existing buyers and then we sold them <clears throat> without ever getting on the phone with them. And we generated around $56,000. So spent 2000 bucks, made $56,000 uh, off of a small portion of people. 